Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Joe Danger the movie? Joe Danger the movie is the sequel to Joe Danger, which is a game created by Hello Games, and it is primarily a stuntman collectathon. A little bit of racing involved, a lot of stunts, and a lot of objective-based gameplay, where you have to ace a level doing certain objectives in order to get 100%. So you might be thinking, oh, it's like Trials. Kind of. The original Joe Danger did come out before Trials, if I recall correctly. But it's more focused on the speed and less on the precision. Yeah, that's probably the best way I can describe it. Uh, Trials is, is a game that's all about really, really precise moves a lot of the time. Whereas Joe Danger, not so much. A uh, little bit more forgiving, but way focused on stunts and speed and these cool different sub-objectives going through a level at blistering pace most of the time. Finally, Joe Danger has made its way to PC, and this is going to be a pretty rare WTF is, because I can already start off by telling you that I absolutely adore it. Why? Because I played the hell out of it on PlayStation 3, the only platform that the original was available on for quite some time. It was, at the time, kind of revered as one of the best downloadable titles that the PS3 had. This was back in the day when PS3 did not have a huge amount of really strong downloadable games. And Joe Danger came out and said, yeah, I am amazing. Pay attention to me. And it was, and I did. Joe, Dan Joe Danger the movie is a little bit more focused on variety because it introduces a lot of different vehicles, whereas the first game focused on the motorbike. This is a game about making the most absurd action movie possible, and you are the stuntman, so you have to execute various objectives, whether it be on skis, a snowmobile, a jetpack, a unicycle, I kid you not, as well as minecarts, motorbikes and all sorts of different things like that. So there's a huge amount of variety in Joe Danger the movie versus the original. Both are currently available on Steam right now. If they're not out by the time this video comes out, they will be out today. Unless, of course, there is a delay of some sort. And the PC version is packed with extra content. The first bit that you might like to have a look at are, of course, the costumes, which include all the Team Fortress 2 characters as well as Stefan right here from Craft Mine. There we go. And I think we'll be picking the heavy. Because why wouldn't we? Options menu. Let's have a quick look at that. So this is a bit deceptive because the main options menu is actually outside the game in an external launcher, which is not uncommon by any stretch of the imagination, but it is there. And the controls are fully rebindable outside of the game, but inside the game, they simply display them here. So first caveat, if you do not own a 360 pad, this game will be more difficult for you to play. The reason I say that is because there's a lean mechanic. Notice on the left stick right there. This is used in a number of different scenarios, mostly on the unicycle levels where you have to balance your unicycle or it falls over, but for the most part it's used to combo a level 100% because when you do wheelies and balance your vehicle on either the front or the back wheel, then you do gain boost and you also can combo stunts together to get a 100% perfect score. Doing that on a digital input like a keyboard versus analog stick, which is very much designed to be balanced in that way, is more difficult. Is it unplayable? No. Is it more difficult to play? Yes. Yes, it is. So that's the caveat there. If you are just playing with a keyboard and not a 360 pad, you may struggle. Of course, it'll work on, assuming you can bind it to it, any controller that has analog sticks, but that would require you to set it up the default compatibilities with the 360 pad, which as far as I'm concerned is a tool that should be in the toolkit of most PC gamers. But again, that is a black mark on the game regardless. It was a way around it. Probably not, honestly, but Still, that's something worth mentioning. Full options are available in that launcher, which include a bunch of graphics options, lots of different options, including a lot of anti-aliasing and all sorts of things like that. So that's that's all there. Separate volume slider is always nice to see. How to play. It's that. <laughs> that's, that's all they bother to tell you. The first few movie, movie scenes in the game are very much tutorials. In fact, the game is almost constantly teaching you stuff outside of the ultra hard. Now, this game is stocked absolutely stocked full of content. Not only does it have the ability to create your own levels, download new levels from the internet, as well as full Steam Workshop support, but it also has multiplayer, downloadable tours, deleted scenes, and the ultra hard preview, which I will check out later just so you can laugh at me. Bunch of extra tours, all sorts of different things, including the aforementioned unicycle. And then you've got your full campaign, which is in movie mode. Annoyingly enough, this menu is designed for a console, so it takes a little bit of time to scroll through. Would have been nice if they'd done a proper vertical menu. You, you can control it with mouse, but there's actually no point at all. So uh, that kind of sucks. All sorts of different 
acts, as you can see. Act 1 is on a minecart. Act 2, primarily, it's actually on various things. There's a snowmobile, skis, and I believe there is also a jetpack involved in that one. Mostly on a police bike, which actually handles differently to the regular bikes. That one starts on a quad bike as well, so lots of different variety there. So let's get started and actually show you what it's all about, how it controls. All right, let's rock and roll, shall we? So, these levels do very much have optional objectives that they're focused on. Although, in order to get 100% score... <laughs> I'm such a baddie! Oh, man. Just completely ignored that that was going to be there. Alright, let's try again. Good lord. So, as I said, the levels have various different objectives which include collecting stars, bananas, doing all sorts of secret stuff on the nuclear launch mission. It's actually stop the nuclear launch by landing on all of the missiles, which is actually quite a precise and difficult thing to do. There we go, all the way through there. Couple of backflips and some extra stunts in there. Why not? Why would we not? Jump over there, duck. The bananas, oh, damn it. <laughs> the bananas are optional objectives on this one. I'm not even sure how you actually get that one. I've yet to figure it out. I've not been able to get the air to actually successfully do that. I'm screwing this level up really badly. One way or the other, though, there are plenty of objectives, and that does encourage replaying the level multiple times to get the best score. The game also has a ghost mode, which means that people on your friends list can actually put their ghosts into your game and you can race against them. You can also watch the moves that they do, which is pretty helpful for actually learning things. And aside from that, of course, it's full on multiplayer with... And there's leaderboards for pretty much everything, so yeah, it's all kind of available there. But the game focuses on high speed, yeah? Getting through as quickly as possible, but also collecting everything, which means you have- You do pretty much have to learn the levels. I mean, there's no- there's no real way around that. You have to learn the levels, otherwise you will not get the score that you are looking for. Ugh, that didn't go so well. Uh, damn it. Like here, for instance, yeah? It's- it's obvious you're supposed to take this at a specific angle, and then use that to get up high enough to collect all the stars. But I screwed it up. As I say, it does take a little bit of learning. In fact, it takes an awful lot of learning. There's a star up there, for instance. You know, grabbing that as part of the run while also getting the high score, very difficult to do. So, as simple as it is, it's also got an awful lot of depth and difficulty to it. Which is cool, because you can enjoy the game on a fairly low level and just say, Yeah, I just want to race through the missions and... That, that to me is fun, yeah, and that's cool. I want to do a stunt every now and again. And then there's other people, of course, that want 100% combo the level and get all of the collectibles in the level and unlock all of the stars and pro medals and so on and so forth. There's a huge amount in the game for them as well, which is why I think it's got this great appeal. And for me, it's incredibly fun. And the reason I say it is it's completely high octane all the time. It never slows down. It expects that you will be able to deal with a, not, a lot of nonsense coming your way. But it also expects that you can do it kind of in your own style and in your own way. By comboing stunts together and just having fun. And doing ridiculous things like eight or seven times backflips and all sorts of nonsense like that. What'd I get? Ah, oh, no, that is actually my high score for that mission, so that's not too bad. I grabbed the star as well, and I missed two of the little blue stars, so I do not get the pro medal. Do not pass go, do not collect 200 pounds. And there you go. So, let's do this one. This one's a little bit different, because this one's not about speed, it's a little bit more about stealth and timing. There's a lot of different sub-objectives for this one, but you've got to try and sneak through the laser beams. Which is difficult to do, and if you don't do that, you'll probably be impaled on spikes or killed by rocket power grenades. So there you go. I, I don't think it's possible to jump that. I, I have yet to manage it, but I think there's... It seems like there must be a way to actually jump higher because I've seen a whole bunch of stars and things that are so high that I don't think it's even possible to reach it. I set the alarms off, so it's not impossible to get through the level with the alarms on like that, but it's pretty damn difficult. You will, for the most part, probably be horribly murdered, but as I said, it's more about variety this time around than it actually is about the race to the end experience that the original game focused on. And that's that's both good and bad. It's good for those of us who want the variety, less good for those of us that just wanted the racing. That said, if, if you just want the racing and the straight up courses, then Joe Danger, 
the original is most assuredly available for you in that respect. There we go. I'm going to try and do the whole thing with the alarms on. Yeah, pretty damn difficult. Although I imagine there's probably an achievement for actually pulling that off. There we go. Can I boost over this? I could have if I hadn't screwed it up. But there you go. There are a lot of different funny deaths as well, as you can probably note. Oh, come on, boost me over. There we go. Triple front flip into the whatever the hell that was. Yes. So there's a little bit of Trials here, and there's a little bit of Tony Hawk here as well, as far as I'm concerned. It's a heady combination, something that, quite frankly, is absolutely phenomenal fun. It, it, is, it is a pretty game in the sense of the fact that it's nice and colorful. It's got a lot of great ideas behind it, and a huge amount of content. Those were lasers. Great. <laughs> Should have seen that one coming a mile away. There we go. Oh, trying to collect the danger letters. I don't even know why I am, because I missed the N earlier in the level. It's a game for both kind of casual players and complete score attacking perfectionists. And it's very rare that a game manages to be both. And yet, this one most assuredly is. The fact that this is now finally on PC is actually something I'm really, really happy about. And the benefit, of course, of Steam Workshop and the extra content that this game's got is absolutely fantastic. It's a game that I don't think people should ignore. Perhaps they look at it and it's like, oh, look at this. It's kind of a cute little casual game. It's not at all. It's actually got a great style to it. And if you play the harder levels, it is ridiculously difficult to pull off, as I'm about to show you when I do the ultra hard preview. I'll also do one of the unicycle levels just to show you how it goes, because generally speaking, you don't get to race on a unicycle. Unirace is the only obvious example of that that I can personally think of. Oh, there you go. Not a great score. That was lousy. But again, it's something you can beat with practice. I was actually faster than most players, but there you go. Even managed to get those stars, but I didn't collect all of the danger letters, so I will not be getting my pro medal today. Okay. All right. You wanted it. Let's do something a little bit more difficult. So, we'll start with deleted scenes. This is the... Yeah, shall we... Yeah, let's do that. We will start with the... <laughs> with goodwill stunting, which is 100% combo a level on a unicycle. Which, of course, as you might imagine, involves a rather significant amount of balance. There we go. And you could also stunt, because hey, why not? Can you backflip on a unicycle? Yes. Is it rather difficult to do? Definitely. God damn it. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, let's try again. Balance the unicycle. Excellent. It's not an easy level. Not at all. As I think you can probably figure out. But it's a lot of fun. And it does demonstrate the amount of variety that this game actually has. There we go. Pull off a little trick there as well. The technique really to playing this game well is to always be looking ahead. The way that they've skewed the perspective is actually helpful because it lets you see an awful lot of what's coming at you. You shouldn't be looking at your rider. You should be looking at what's coming at the bottom of the screen all the way to the right because that's what will help you actually play this game really, really well. I'd honestly say that Joe Danger the movie is also significantly harder than the original, which is really quite cool. Did I manage to combo that level? Yes, I did. And I got the speed score multiplier. Excellent. Fantastic. That's what I like to say. As you can see, I also have no friends. All right. Okay. Yeah, that was... Let's try something a little bit harder. This is the preview of Ultra Hard Mode. Yeah. Beat the Assault Part 5, collect all the clocks, hit all the targets, explore for hidden stars, and don't get horribly murdered. Love to. <laughs> you bunch of dicks. You see that? You see what I'm looking at right now? Yeah, you see it. How do you even get over that? It's just ridiculous. Oh, I have no idea. I actually have no idea how to do it. It's it's a technique that I very clearly have not learned yet to be able to launch that freaking high in the air. Oh, oh yes, I did it. Yes, yes, oh, yes, no. Oh, Christ. There we go. Ah, I missed the star. It's okay. I'm over it. I'm not over it. They put man traps on both sides. What a... Oh, these guys are a bunch of dicks. Yeah, this is the first level of Ultra Hard. <laughs> what a joke. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's a game for everybody. It's got casual stuff. It's got hardcore stuff. You can play it on a lot of different levels. 
in more, more, more ways than one, simply because there is a gigantic stack of content. Just blitz through the levels or go for the full score. Unlock everything that's available to be unlocked. It's it's a joy to play. It really is. I mean, it always has been, even since the first game. I loved the first game. I thought it was one of the best titles that I played on PlayStation 3 at that time. And don't let the cutesy look fool you. This is a ton of fun. Ridiculous amount of fun. And I would strongly recommend it to pretty much anyone that has the patience. It is a game that you will have to play levels in more than once. You will. Because they're missing everything is pretty easy to do. You know, you're focusing on trying to beat the level. Then you realize, oh, it's actually not just about that, is it? No, there's all these sub-objectives that I've got to worry about. All of these hazards I've got to worry about. So I've got to beat him. It's cool. It's really, really cool. It's an extremely fun game, and I would heartily, heartily recommend it. God damn it, at least I collected D. Joe Danger the movie, ladies and gentlemen, as well as the original Joe Danger, currently available on Steam. Please, for the love of God, do not ignore the existence of these games. They are incredibly fun. Really, really good. And I look forward to seeing what the level editing community as well as the guys on Steam Workshop can actually provide for the title. I'm hoping that it ends up being a game that we are playing for years to come with some amazing stuff. I'm not very good at it. It doesn't matter. I have fun with it anyway. My name has been Total Biscuit, Joe Danger, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh, yeah.